I'm going to play for you two clips from one of my videos, and I want you to spot the difference, okay? Out of all the versions I've played of SimCity, stay far away from the C64 version, because this one is... Mm, not good. I mean, I can't show on it too much because it is a C64 game and is technically the original version of SimCity. But it is saying something when the unreleased prototype of SimCity for the NES is a better version of SimCity. Out of all the versions I've played of SimCity, stay far away from the C64 version because this one is... Mm, not good. But it is saying something when the unreleased prototype of SimCity for the NES is a better version of SimCity. With that said, even this version is technically better than a lot of the other versions for the simple reason it has music. So the most obvious difference is one is for YouTube, the other is for TikTok. However, there are also many more subtle differences between the two because whenever I made the uh, TikTok versions of some of my videos to promote them, you know, I had to make a few changes in the actual edit because of different reasons. And sometimes I had to cut out some sections because maybe a joke wouldn't have landed because I was also like cutting down the video a little bit to make it more concise for TikTok. That, that's the main thing that I have to do with it. But then the consequence of that is also having to move around music, move around voiceover. Sometimes I also have to, well, really all the time, I have to change the actual like edit a little bit i have to change what the visual presentation is because of the different aspect ratios i mean look just look at these two screenshots they are the same moment in the uh omori video but you can see how there are clearly some differences in how i present the omori video as it's meant to be and the omori video as it's on tiktok now what does this have to do with google's new inactive account policy i'll put it like this Google's new inactive account policy says that you gotta at least use our fucking services once in two years, okay guys? Like, at least watch a YouTube video, at least send an email, at least log into your fucking account sometime in the past, oh, what, 730 days? So, in fairness, they have a pretty decent policy when it comes to people who are currently alive and breathing. But, if you're dead, well... That's a different story. You gotta start archiving dead people's YouTube channels. If there's a YouTube channel that you fucking love, that you were so fucking nostalgic for because you grew up watching their videos, but the guy making it or the girl making it or whoever is dead now, well, you gotta start downloading those videos. You gotta start archiving them because someday they may just be gone. And that is, unfortunately, the reality of not just the internet, but even the universe where, yeah, shit doesn't go away on the internet. But eventually it will, because eventually the internet will be replaced with something different. Now we can speculate on why Google is trying to, I guess, purge their uh, reserve of so much AI training data. But, I mean, whatever. That's not really why I am interested in talking about in this video. I want to instead emphasize to the content creator who is alive right now that can watch this video that you need to hold on to all of your files that you make when making a video, a song, if you're an artist, you gotta hold on to that PSD file, if you're whatever, like, you gotta hold on to your files, man, because something could come up that isn't even just your account being deleted, it could be something like, I don't know, just a content ID claim that is really fucking annoying, that's keeping you from being able to make money. Well, guess what? You can say fuck you and just re-upload the video and yeah, you'll get penalized a little bit because you may not have as many views, but like you could re-upload the video theoretically and just cut out the song that was infringing and replace it with something else. That is the most simplistic real world example of having to keep your original files or a video because otherwise, how are you going to remove a song that is all of a sudden now getting claimed by the copyright system? and you only have like even let's just say you even have the final exploit video well you're kind of fucked so you'll probably instead just default anyway to the content id system and uh just trying to remove it that way which hey sometimes that is going to be the better option than just re-uploading the video wholesale however there are moments where you may have to re-upload your video anyway for instance if you get a dmca and you have to actually like remove someone's content from your video well you're kind of screwed if you only have the final export or if you have to re-download your video off of youtube but my experience, downloading a video from the video manager on YouTube is just fucking laughable. 
because what you end up with is a 720p version of your video. For reference, I have been uploading in 1440p and I felt behind the curve a little bit even so, because 4K has been a thing for the past, I don't know, 5 years at least? I think it's officially been on YouTube for even longer than that. So the notion that YouTube somehow only has a 720p version of your own video when they are able to stream a 4K version of it is fucking laughable in my eyes. So what you'll most likely do is resort to some kind of YouTube video downloading program to download your own video and even then it can not be like as good because now you're dealing with the compression of YouTube. Let's say that you even have the final export video still. Well, you still have to make some hard cuts in the video and if you do that, well then it kind of just ends up being sloppy. I'm going to give you an example right now. I think it was in my Omori video, my second one, where I specifically talked about a, uh, a donkey video, like I referenced it. Um, if for some reason I can't remember why. I'm going to show you that clip right now. However, I do want to point out this clip I'm always reminded of when considering the difficulty in RPGs. Why is there a level 80 guy in the baby starting area? Okay, now I'm going to show you the context around it, but I'm going to cut out anything that would be like donkey's property, okay? However, I do want to point out this clip I'm always reminded of when considering the difference. There is a fine balance between making the game stupidly easy. So while I highly doubt Donkey would ever claim my video for using that, I, in fact, I, I don't think he even would ever see this video. My point that I'm making is, in, th in this instance where I'm using someone else's content, even though I would argue it's for fair use, but I still use someone else's content. If they claim that and I have to remove it, well, you see how sloppy of an edit that is if I only used the final export video. Whereas if you still have all the files for your Premiere project, you can just go in and remove the clip, cut around the voiceover a little bit. The music won't even be tainted all that much, like at all, because now where one spot of your voiceover would be is just in another spot of the music. And hey, this is just my experience with my own videos because this is the thing that I have over a decade of experience with. I have been doing YouTube for half my life actually now. <laughs> I don't know if that is uh, sad or what. But my point in demonstrating this to you is to show that these are the precautions that are necessary to make when it comes to making your videos or your music or whatever. Because even when it comes to your music, um, like for me, if I ever want to remix, like I actually go in and adjust the EQ of certain tracks or whatever, okay? I can do that because I have all of my music masters and the Ableton projects with them and the files that would then go into those Ableton projects. And at least for me, when it came to making like voxel memories, that took so fucking long. It would be stupid to make an album and not have those files still somehow backed up. So that is my point in this video, is at any time your account can get deleted and by extension you end up losing all of your videos if you're a YouTuber or all of your music if you're a musician or whatever. But you don't if you just retain the files themselves and even more so if you retain the actual production files. For me, let me demonstrate how fucking stupid it would be for me to not retain these files. Do you see that little number that's in the bottom right of every thumbnail on every YouTube video, okay? The time code. Alright, now look at my main channel. Look at the, like, past year, or I guess now year and a half of videos. What you can do is, if you read that number as not minutes and seconds, but as hours and minutes, you get a pretty good estimate for how long it took for me to just edit my videos. Not everything else that went into it, like voiceover, writing the script, uh, even having to source the footage. No, no, no. Just the editing. Now, I've gotten faster as time has gone on, and especially with making the current format of videos on the main channel. I've, got, I've definitely gotten faster, though I think now I'm probably a bit rusty because it's been a while. But with that knowledge, 
you can now see how fucking stupid it would be for me to make a 54 minute two-parter on Needy Streamer Overload and not retain the original files. It would be really fucking stupid for me to make a hour-long video on Minecraft and an hour-long video on SimCity. And as well, a roughly, well, almost 30-minute video that is on SimCity 4 and not retain any of those files. There's a reason why on one of my hard drives I have a folder that is one terabyte that is the second Omori video and that is because for some reason proxying footage is actual hell. Like I don't know why but somehow 140 gigabytes of gameplay footage got proxied into almost like 750 I think. Yes Premiere sure that's how that works I guess. But my point is is if you give enough of a shit about the stuff that you make where you spend this much time on it, then you probably should keep the files that are needed to make it. And there are things I've definitely put many more hours into than just my own videos. I guess if you look at my channel and add it up, I think I did the math at one point and found that I had about seven and a half hours of the um, like video essay series. That would be apparently 450 hours of editing. Not counting the script writing, not counting the voiceover, not counting the, like, having to play the games and getting the footage, not having to count any of that. You can already see the clear picture and the clear reason why if you put that kind of time into anything, you should hold on to all the files for it. So I may be hearing some of you say, well, how do we actually hold on to these files? Because you said that one of your videos was like a terabyte. Well, what if I have a video that's two terabytes that I need to hold the files onto? Well, I'll describe it like this. You can go into Amazon and Newegg right now and buy a five terabyte external hard drive for about hundred dollars now yeah that is a hundred dollars okay that is definitely going to be expensive for some people let's put it like this federal minimum wage hasn't been raised in over a decade and it's still seven dollars 25 now in some states the states have made it higher like massachusetts is like 15 dollars california is 15 dollars 50 cents but then you go to pennsylvania and it is the national wage so that means that if we're using the federal minimum wage of seven dollars 25 cents that means a $100 hard drive would be the cost of like 13.8 hours, which in my mind should read as that means that anything that you put at least 13.8 hours into, you should be putting onto a hard drive that costs as much. You should be retaining that. And you can now immediately see why I could justify even a whole hard drive for one video. It looks like the shortest video I did last year was the death of an artist video, which was 22 minutes. Using my minutes to hour metric where each minute uh, is an hour of editing. That means that video by federal minimum wage standards cost me about $160. So that means if I got rid of those files, I would be throwing away $160 of work. Whereas if I put it on even its own hard drive that is overly sized because I think that project file would only have been like 200 gigabytes at the very most. Even if it got its own $100 5 terabyte hard drive, that $100 hard drive would still be protecting an extra $60 of value. So you can now see why when I make a total backup of all my videos, because I have a hard drive that is all of my videos and all of my music and it's a backup of all of that and it only cost a hundred and something amount of dollars. Yeah. No, you can see why that is a worthwhile investment. Because if the hard drive that is in your computer fails and it had all of your projects on it, but all of your projects are on an external hard drive, well, guess what? You didn't just lose <laughs> probably thousands of dollars of work. And let's be honest for a minute, if you're doing something that is actually of value where you're creating something original, ignore me making my like pseudo video essay shit, okay? If you're actually creating something and adding value to the world, then your value that you're adding is just going to be more than $7.25 an hour when it comes to making music or whatever because at least in my eyes I think that there is so much more value to creating something than even critiquing it. If you could tie a monetary value to it because of course it's all subjective because it's art uh, but if you could attach even like a $20 value for the amount of work that you do per hour to make an album and the album takes like a thousand hours well congratulations you just added twenty thousand dollars to the value of i guess art or whatever the hell look man it's about 5 a.m i <laughs> don't know what the fuck i'm talking about anymore the point i'm making is if you're someone that makes shit you need to hold on to your files all of them 
every single one of them where you make something because otherwise if you lose a video for in my case well then that's going to be a terrible feeling and yeah i've lost i've lost some videos but generally 99 percent of my videos i do have the files for anyway so that has been my uh, lesson for today if you are someone that creates anything and you give a shit about what you create, you gotta hold on to all of the files. Every single one of them. Because you don't know when you're gonna need them. You don't know if you're going to ever have to like remix an album to make it sound better. You don't know if you're ever gonna have to re-edit a video because of some DMCA thing. You don't know when you're ever gonna have to touch those files again. But the moment that you need to and you don't have them, well, you're just in a world of hurt at that point. It is always better to have paid even $200 for a hard drive and to have all of your files safely on that hard drive for however long that you may need them because you never know when you're going to have to access them again. Oh yeah, and the only reason why I give a shit about Google's new policy as opposed to talking about Twitter's new policy because I know they were trying to roll this out like a week or so ago. Uh, it's because Google actually has a service. They actually have something of value. Whereas Twitter very clearly doesn't. Yeah, go ahead and deactivate at AppsoProb or whatever the hell my Twitter account is. I don't even put those at the end of my videos anymore. I don't think. I don't remember, man. It's almost, yeah, it's like 5.05 right now. I'm fucking tired. Anyway, subscribe to channels. Check out, I don't know, a couple of the videos I mentioned. I'm out. <laughs>